the Bengals get the win over the Titans, uh, 19-16 to at Cincinnati over Tennessee. And this was, uh, this was a weird game. You know, it, it, obviously all of the home teams lost stands the Chiefs, but, uh, but you wouldn't expect Cincinnati to maybe win a game in this fashion. Right, the way that they have played all year, if they can't get that offense moving, especially when they give up, what was it? I think official, it was nine sacks in this one, um, but I think they counted like the last Joe Burrow thing as a sack. So it's eight. It, let's say eight sacks. This was a weird way for Cincinnati to win this game. Going through some of the insights here, uh, Evan McPherson, the field goal kicker, uh, rookie kicker out of Florida, first player in NFL history to make four plus field goals in multiple games in a single postseason. Uh, the Bengals won a divisional round game on the road for the first time in their franchise history. Uh, Titans defense had nine sacks. It's the most sacks in an NFL game since at least 1960. Uh, Burrow, first second-year quarterback to win multiple playoff games since Russell Wilson. who Never bought- lost a postseason game in his life. Correct, correct. That's, uh, that would be one Joey Burrow. Uh, Russell Wilson, in 2013, did go on to win the Super Bowl. So... Just toss that out there. Uh, Jeffrey Simmons, three sacks, the most for a Tennessee or Houston player in a playoff game since 82. Did and, not like uh, him. <laughs> he, uh, he got all over uh, one Joseph Burrow, sir. Uh, Harold Landry surpassed Jason Fisk with 4.5 as the most, or for the most postseason sacks among Houston or Tennessee players since 1982 uh, when individual sacks were officially tracked. So Titans, 5-10 and 10 all-time in the divisional round. They are 1-4 and four at home. So even though they get this, uh, it still does not matter. Still does not matter. Uh, and then finally, I'll I'll toss this in here. Um, Jamar Chase, two hundred twenty five yards, uh, surpassed Chris Collinsworth for the most receiving yards among rookies in a single postseason in Bengals history. Very interesting. Uh, and then finally, uh, how about this one? Um, Titans are zero and three in the playoffs as a number one seed since seeding began in nineteen seventy five. I'm surprised <laughs> that they are. Uh... They've been the number one seed three times. Well, I mean, it goes all the way back to uh, to what 1975. Um, uh, well, so, yeah, I guess you're right. You well, know, looking back at the Oilers, really good. Yeah. So that's they've been a one seed before. They got knocked out by the Ravens uh, way back when. I think Steve McNair was still the quarterback at that point. So this game was pretty crazy. Like it was a great game to start the uh, the weekend. Yeah. And so. <laughs> Let's talk about let's talk about A dot again. Average depth of target. What would you say it was for Burrow and Tannehill? Really, really, really low. Actually, not. Okay, that surprises me because I know that they both did a lot of dumping the ball off. So Burrow threw the ball forty seven times. Okay, Tannehill only threw it twenty eight times. Burrow was four point one A dot. I knew his was going to be short. Tannehill because was he threw it a ton. Oh yeah, Tannehill's was ten point nine. Now, how do they handle all the incompletions? Uh, those all it, basically where the ball was intended to go, right? No, okay, that's bullshit. Then all right, then that's a fucked up stat that nobody cares about. All right, because he threw the ball a lot deep that nobody ever touched. That guy had three positive plays the entire game, and they were all oh, yeah. three positive passing to uh, to to uh, to to AJ Brown. That's the list. That's it. He did three things well the entire day. Yes. No, no, he didn't do three things well. He did one thing well three times the entire day. Everything else he cocked up. So he can, is it, obviously we, we hate assigning blame. Maybe, okay. maybe we I don't. got no problem blaming uh, him. I think, I think Tannehill's the reason they lost the game. Yeah. Like bottom no, there's line. There's no question about that. There's like, no question about that. Tannehill had the worst quarterback performance of the weekend of all the quarterbacks. And, and, and it wasn't even close. And and Jimmy Garoppolo and 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 <laughs> shitty Aaron Rodgers were two of those guys that played god awful football games. Yes. Right? Tannehill yes. was way worse than both those dudes. And Burrow got sacked nine times. Burrow got sacked nine times. Like, uh, it's just unbelievable. Just unbelievable. This was a very interesting ball game. Uh, basically, you were waiting for the next shoe to drop as to who was going to mess this thing up, and the Bengals could not get their offense moving for whatever reason. Uh, they only scored one touchdown, but it was all that they needed because they were able to kick four field goals. Yep. By the way, Burrow getting on the uh, on the post game press conference afterwards and saying that McPherson came up to him and was like, "Hey, 
Looks like we're going to the AFC Championship game. Before he yeah. went out to kick the 52-yarder. I mean, got balls. What? I love it. I guess got balls. Grapefruits. Absolute <laughs> grapefruits down there. I mean, it's. I want a kicker with some attitude. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's. It, it, he's definitely that. He is definitely a little cocky, and, and you better be good if you're going to have that much uh, cockiness to you. But I loved it. I loved hearing about it. Uh, everything about this game was, I mean, fun. I mean, it was just a fun game to watch. You, you, we couldn't believe what was happening, you know, play after play I, after play. I did not have as much fun. I was, I really was worried about Joe. I really was worried about Joe. Uh, it's, it's so. Here's the interesting thing. We got into the discussion again, uh, myself and the Bet US college football guys, over whether or not you draft Jamar Chase or an offensive lineman, right? And I mean, you can't say an offensive lineman because the option was Penny Sewell. Right, right, right. So at Panay okay. Sewell, so you, or, can't, so you can't just pull the best offensive lineman from the draft class and say, "Well, had they drafted him, oh, instead of they weren't going, they weren't going to take Slater." Okay, yeah. So you can't use that as an argument. Take Penny Sewell's rookie year and take Jamar Chase's rookie year, and who makes Joe Burrow better? I think it's Chase. It's I don't think it's close. close. It's not close. And if Penny Sewell was a lockdown best tackle in football year one, Joe Thomas recreated. It's still Chase because you still have four other positions that blow on that offensive line. One great offensive lineman doesn't make a good offensive line. I will I will tell you this. They are significantly improved over last season, right? Yes. They are they significantly are substantially improved. better than they were last year. However, they're still Real bad. Yes, and and don't get me wrong. The Titans have been one of the best teams in the league at, at getting after the quarterback this year. Correct. Uh, they they just completely overhauled their defensive line and and found them some edge guy. They got some guys healthy. I mean, Harold Landry was not healthy last year. He got healthy this year. He was able to come off the edge. Uh, they were able to do some things this year that they hadn't been able to. You're going to have games like that where where guys are hurt, etc. But yeah, the Bengals still have to upgrade that offensive line. I mean, they just got some work to do. Well, uh, and, and hang on. I'll tell you, I think they can. So Cleveland went from the worst offensive line in football to the best offensive line in football in one offseason. Yeah. And and they did it. They they brought in Odell. They brought in Stefanski. They brought in this new regime. And they were doing all these fun things on offense. And all these offensive linemen who were free agents, and they didn't draft a one of them. Okay? All these offensive linemen, maybe they drafted one of them. But all the rest of them were all free agents. And the best free agent offensive lineman available chose to come play in Cleveland because they saw what that offense was building. They saw what that offense was doing, and they said, I want to go be a part of that because I think they're doing something wild and fun in Cleveland. If you're a free agent offensive lineman this year and Kyle Shanahan's not calling you or Bill Belichick's not calling you, why would you pick anywhere other than since why would you not want to hit your wagon to this offense? Oh, I, I have no answer for that. Why would you not look at Joe and say, I'll block for that guy for the next five years? I'll oh, do because that. Because you know you're safe at that point. I mean, it's that's like hitching it. your wagon to Tom that's, Brady. That's it. That's that's the question. And 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 there are so few um coaches that that are offensive line friendly that it just doesn't matter. You just want to pick the best young quarterback that you could hit your wagon to. And I'm going to tell you, I think Joe's the answer. I thought Baker and what was happening in Cleveland, that's the reason they got those guys. I don't think they overpaid. I don't think they were the highest better. I think they paid fair market value. But I think the best guards in the league wanted to come play in Cleveland because they saw what was happening. And Cleveland went from the worst to the best in one offseason. I think Cincinnati has potential to do that if – they're willing to break open the checkbook, pay people fair market value for their work, and go get some of these dudes. Well, you don't have to just draft them. Yeah. Draft one because that one is probably going to be elite if you're drafting an offensive lineman in the first round. Hopefully, you're going to be late now in the draft, which is a good thing. And and then sign two, and you can overhaul your offensive lineman immediately. The, uh, the Chiefs did the same thing after just – being demolished in the Super Bowl last year, right? Last year. Yeah. Now, they they didn't have anywhere close to the best offensive line in football this year. No, no, no. But, but, but if you got a quarterback from, like that, they you don't went need from it. The, they went from the worst to very, very serviceable. Yes. Very serviceable. Yeah, they, they now, the ended difference up being is, really good. The Chiefs have never had a problem since Andy Reid has been there getting free agents to want to come play in that offense. 
whether their offense, skill position, whatever. Cincinnati hadn't had that luxury ever until yeah. now. That's yeah, you, I, I think this is what's different now is guys will want to come play there. And I think it would be smart of them to bring back some of those great Hall of Fame offensive linemen to, to do a little the little PR, get a little commercial action working. You know, when you bring these free agents in, let them meet, you know, Mr. Munoz and, and have some of these conversations and talk about the history of the position in Cincinnati and get guys to want to play there. Oh, most certainly. Most certainly. But I think you can flip that. I think that's a position group that you can flip real quick. Yes. Yes. Uh, it, again, like I said, you look at the Chiefs, you look at some of these other teams, it, you can do it by switching out just a couple of guys. Like it, you can switch that thing to where it is serviceable. And if you've got the right weapons and the right quarterback, you don't need them to block for that long. Like nope. that's the biggest thing is Joe Burrow has well, shown this year he can get the ball out quick when he needs to, right? Now, obviously, yesterday, uh, Saturday, completely different. So, so he can get the ball out quick. That offense does not operate like that, though. That right. offense wants to go deep, and they oh, yeah. want, but those things take time. And he tried that yesterday several times. You know, he'd give you a twelve-step drop because he's trying to let these guys get open. And before his back foot just hits the dirt, and he's planting to even try to throw the football, it's over. Yeah. So three guys came through untouched. It, it's just, it was just a massacre. It was just a, you know, and I don't, and I don't know what you do. Right. Like I, I watched that game and, and, um, God, I, I, I got in like a, like a little Twitter spat with somebody who was talking about how, Oh, they brought the house. Like they sent far more and Joe's got to be a better decision maker there. And then you got a replay. They brought three guys. Yes. And everybody else dropped back and two of the three came through untouched. Yeah. And I'm thinking, what the hell are you talking about, man? What like what are you what are you talking about? Because Ian Eagle, I think, is the guy that did the call. And Ian Eagle was like, they they're breaking the house and they've got the numbers. It was like they rushed three dudes. Like that wasn't dropped, the numbers. That was <laughs> they showed six, but they only brought three. Well, well, the problem with well, they showed six. Okay, so you're telling me that every play action pass is really credited as a run? Like that? No, no, they rushed three, and two of the three came through untouched. That's a problem. Five guys blocking three guys, and two of them don't get touched. Yes, yes, that's I'm with not you. on the quarterback. Yeah, no, I I don't think you're wrong there. I don't think you're wrong at all. It was they were just able to get through them because. The defensive line was better. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.